Um, so, I went to the cinema, and now it's time for Liam went to the cinema, and here's a spoiler free review of the things that he saw at the cinema. Ooh. Cool. What did you see, Liam? Uh, well, Jack, we both saw something, didn't we? We did, that's true. We went to see, so before, the day before the Natural History Museum, we went to a special showing of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Oh. oh I, that's so funny. I just watched this the other day for the first time, too. Oh, my God. I'm so, Oh, really? Oh, wait. Is this the way I saw you have a picture with Tommy Wiseau? Was he yes. really there? Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm yeah. so jealous. I was telling everybody about it. I actually was telling everybody here about that you had a picture with him, and I was so jealous of it. Honestly, he is ex- exactly as you would imagine him to be. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's, he's full on, like... He's really weird. Just like off his face on coke is how it seems. Yeah, like a hundred percent. There was this moment where we sat down and I turned to Liam and Kat and I was like, "Yeah, he's definitely on like coke or ecstasy or something." Really? And then Kat was like, "Oh yeah, like he was, you know, um, gurning." Do you guys know what that is? Like grinding your teeth. I don't know if that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was sort of doing that a lot when he wasn't like talking. He'd start doing that, and and I was like, "Oh, he's definitely on something." Oh, okay. And like so, so. They had a Q and A before the film as well. So it was Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero were both there answering yep. questions. Cool. And so, so first thing, right? Let me let me go to the beginning. You weren't allowed to get a picture with him unless you purchased some of the merchandise they had sure, with them okay. there. So fair. you couldn't like take your own DVD and get them to sign it. You had to buy it there, which cool, is fair yeah. enough. I respect the hustle. Um, yeah. So I brought like a Blu-ray of the room because I've only got it on DVD. I brought a T-shirt and a tie, which is just brilliant. Okay. Um, got got some pictures with them, and then they do a, a Q and A where he refuses to come out unless there's ten people with a question ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, but then right, yeah, that the the best thing about that is he just seems like he can't wait to get through the questions as quick as possible. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, is it, so do you think it's an act, or does he really hate talking about it? I think he I plays. Up I don't to think it. it's that he hates it. I I I felt like it's. He, it's not that he hates talk. I think he genuinely thinks that he's this incredible personality. And mm. there was this sort of sense of like, almost like I'm, I'm doing this as a favour to you. Damn. And you will take the, the shit I give you. Because like someone would ask a genuine question. He'd misunderstand the question, yeah. sort of insult them for a minute <laughs> and then say, next question. Or, or like there were definitely times where someone would ask him a question. He clearly wasn't listening He'd start talking yeah. about something completely different, and then he'd go, "Right now, say your question. Be quick." And yeah. they're like, "Yeah, I've, well, I've already said it once." <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it was, it was brilliant. It was like pure just car crash entertainment, but happy. Does he, awesome. live Does he take his sunglasses off at all? No. I feel, I, in my mind, he leaves his sunglasses on twenty four seven. Yeah, I never. Saw yeah, him he take didn't them take them off. Okay, that we saw. And the, the, the most tragic thing is Greg Sestero just has this like dead look in his eyes where he's just like. You can almost tell that his brain is just trying to piece together what happened in his life to bring him to this point. <laughs> like, he just seems to be like, looking off into the distance, just trying to figure out, like, what was the one decision that would make this thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I- it, was when, it was when someone asked how, like, someone asked about their friendship, or they were like, oh, oh are you actually, like, best friends or whatever? Yeah. And Tommy was, Tommy went, oh, yeah, yeah, me and Greg are best friends. Then sort of went, haha, joke. And then you just saw Greg and you were like, this poor dude who pretends to be Tommy's friend because this is all he has left because Tommy's ruined him. He, he Tommy won't even pretend that they're like the best friends. He's just like, no, Greg's my friend, but, you know, I could do better. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it was brilliant. Um, and yeah, he, he would just he'd start answering a question and, and then he'd just stop and he'd go, oh, I just need to say uh, if more people love each other, the world would be a better place. Ha ha. And then just go straight back to answering a question. <laughs> That's awesome. he's, it, when he was saying that, it's almost like he'd forget what the question was. So he'd he'd be answering a slightly different question for the second <laughs> half of his answer. Yeah. So yeah, it, that makes it me was really brilliant. Happy. I'm, I saw, I'm super jealous. I saw a Q and A Q&A with RZA at a draft house here at a movie theater here, and he did the same thing. Like he would get asked a question and then answer. A different question, like whatever question you wanted. So I think that's maybe just, you know, the mark of genius that both Riza and Tommy Wiseau are just geniuses that, you know, hear the world a little bit different. Isn't that, what's that, isn't that from a movie or like a quote or something? Like, answer not the question you are asked, but the question you wish you were asked? It might be from Fog of War, maybe. I mean, that something. sounds like a very, like, politician thing to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, so, so you guys have seen the room, yeah? Yes. Yes. 
I just saw for the first time, like, in the past week, like, I was watching the Disaster Artist trailers, and I was like, I can't yeah. take it anymore, I need to watch The Room, yeah. and yeah. Um, I'm so stoked for the Disaster Artist, because we love so, yes. Franco, oh. too, and he, yeah. like, is nailing it in these, like, pre, like, these previews and Seth Rogen looks great in it. So I'm really excited yep. for this actually. And you know what? I don't know if you saw the newest poster, but you know, who's in the background. Oh, I can guess. Take a guess. Is it Zephron? It yep. is. Cause he's, he's right playing... behind Dave Franco. Yep. Oh, nice. Cause he's playing the drug dealer, isn't he? Oh, is I he? Is yeah. He? Yeah. So you know, the guy that oh. threatens Denny on the roof. With yes. The gun? Yes. Yeah. Which someone did ask a question about that. Um, and they, they, I think the question was, what happened to the drug dealer afterwards? And uh, Tommy's answer was, well, obviously he was a bad person. And what happens to bad people? He went to jail. And just like, <laughs> yeah, like as if like the person was an idiot for not realizing that's clearly what happened. <laughs> but honestly, I, I think watching the room in a cinema with people that are just quoting along... Uh, throwing spoons whenever they yep. see a spoon is it's it's probably not the best way to watch it for the first ever time, but it is the ultimate way to watch it. Yeah, yeah. So some of it got there was a couple of times like because the audience would sort of someone would shout out something like wow what was the the sh- closing the door was good. Yeah, there, the but door. there was something specific where a guy made like a joke when something happened, and then someone else in the audience was like, oh that was funny. I'll carry it on. And they do it, and you could just tell that the audience the first time were like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And then when the second person goes, they're like, uh, yeah. you're pushing it a little bit. Yeah. You're not as funny. <clears throat> Had yeah. you guys both seen the movie before, or was this your first time? Yeah, I... No, Liam, uh, Liam showed me in uni. I showed a lot of people in uni. I think I had, like, a good two-month period where I watched that film three or four times a week because I was just introducing <laughs> new people to it. You're doing the Lord's work. I yeah, know. it's great. I get <laughs> I mean, it. It is the sort of movie that it's just so much fun to watch with people that have never seen it before because it starts off where they're like, you get about 15 minutes in and there's been three sex scenes and they turn to you and are like, is this a softcore porn that you're making me watch? <laughs> and then, no, and they're the same sex scene. It's the yep. same sex scene yep. over yep. and over again. Yeah. And then you're just like, that's it now. There's no more sex for the rest <laughs> of the movie. Just sit back and enjoy and it, it's just oh it's so good so I i'd it. give that film 4.5 out of 5 yeah i think i'd agree with you there maybe even <laughs> five but it's, it's close it's just there are a couple of moments where i mean you can't you can't really criticize a, a, a movie like the room to be honest like it, it does what it does and it does it well yeah yeah it's perfect um, I never imagined but, it was going to be that good. Like I, like I said, I just watched it for the first time, and like I couldn't believe how perfectly bad it. You have to have some kind of like pack. Like I've seen bad movies that aren't trying to be bad, and, but I love bad movies that yeah. really had a passion. Like somebody was trying to make a good movie, and it just failed yeah. miserably. It's so much more enjoyable than somebody trying to make a bad movie. Exactly. Yes, exact. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. 